So the POEM procedure is a perioral endoscopic myotomy, and it's for a very specific disease right now for echolasia, which is kind of the tightening of the lower esophagus. It's pretty rare. The instance is maybe one in a hundred thousand. Um, so that kind of makes it a little difficult because there's not too many people trained to treat a disease that's, that's so rare, is the idea being. Uh, main symptoms are weight loss, difficulty eating, eating, and then what we call dysphagia, food getting stuck uh, in your chest is what you, the sensation you kind of get. Like yeah, and then it progresses to where you can't even drink water and, you know, very prone to vomiting and these kind of things. That's the tough part. Usually the diagnosis takes a while to make. It usually starts, a, you know, in a general practitioner's practice with someone who kind of sometimes gets diagnosed with some sort of weight loss issue. It could be an eating disorder, something like that. And as time progresses and they realize like the person's trying to eat, well then they usually end up at a gastroenterologist's office and most of the time they'll end up with an upper endoscopy or a scope uh, that goes down the mouth. And this is where they'll be able to go down through the entire esophagus and at the very end of the esophagus, right before it enters the stomach, there'll be this kind of like constricted area that won't, won't let the scope pass, will barely let the scope go by. And they do additional workup and they find out they have this disease, uh, what we call achalasia. It goes back a, a, a pretty long time, at least in the surgical history. There's multiple treatments. Um, there, a lot of people who can't tolerate surgery or endoscopy, we can try and temporize with medications. Usually doesn't work that well. Then we've got uh, different endoscopic treatments, such as Botox, but that usually only works about six months. And the problem with Botox is once they get it once, it starts working less the second time, less the third time, and eventually they get no, no kind of therapeutic response from it at all. So then the surgical community kind of came up with something called a myotomy, which is where you actually go in surgically and you cut the outside of the muscle of the esophagus to kind of release it so that the food can then go, go by easier. And that's essentially what we're doing with the POEM procedure. We're doing a myotomy, which is cutting muscle, but we're doing it all endoscopically with the scope down the mouth. the way most people do it now, the surgical procedure, everyone should probably be doing it laparoscopically at this point. Uh, this procedure takes probably on the order of an hour and a half to two hours, and it's the same thing. You go in and you cut the longitudinal circular layers of the esophagus, the muscle layers, so you're just left with kind of this small mucosal layer holding the distal esophagus together. And then most people put some sort of protective layer on top of that, um, and that's kind of the, the surgery in a nutshell. Now the endoscopic surgery, it's really unique. You actually go down and you kind of proximally in the esophagus, you create a small window in the wall of it and actually tunnel the scope in the wall of the esophagus until you get to the distal part and then you just cut those muscle fibers I was describing before. Um, releases the lower esophagus so it's pressure free zone and then you pull the scope back out. You close that little area with clips and you're done. The beauty of that is with the surgical um, procedure, you're usually in the hospital I'd say anywhere from two to five days, um, kind of depending. Uh, but with the endoscopic procedure, you know, people can really go home um, uh, the next day. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It definitely should not be done by anybody. Uh, so uh, you, you need to be trained appropriately. Uh, my training came from a fellowship and then I actually went abroad to do a little training, additional training too. Um, and uh, you know, you a fair amount of endoscopic skills, and then cutting into the esophagus. Yeah, there can be problems with that, but so far, uh, the complication rate from the POEM procedure is very, very low, and a very, very safe procedure done in the right hand. So it's a new procedure, so we're still following it. Um, but for the most part, what we found is an excellent re return on the results. Uh, the patients do phenomenal afterwards. It's, it's almost a kind of surprising because we're so used to in the surgical community, you know, having to deal with patients post-operatively, incisions, and just management. And really, the the benefit that these guys, the patients get is phenomenal. Um, it's kind of a shock how well everyone's been doing. I think time will kind of see how that plays out. What I think is going to happen is two things. One, it's a fairly difficult procedure to perform 
so to get trained in it, you have to see enough of it. Like I said, I actually went abroad to get my volume high enough to feel comfortable doing this. So because it's such a rare disease and it's a complex thing to do, I think you will see, at least in the United States for quite some time, kind of specialty centers, things like Hopkins, Harvard, Chicago, Tulane, you know, California programs um, where patients will actually go and travel to have this done. Um, I think it could reach the point though where it does become standard of care for this uh, as the patients are doing so well though. So this is something we're working on, things like this, like outreach information, any way to kind of inform the GI community uh, about the, the new procedure. I think it has caught on very popularly within GI. Um, I would say that all of my referrals for this have come from the GI community, um, so I do believe they're very well informed. Um, some uh, therapeutic GI physicians have even undergone and expressed interest in learning how to do the procedure too, which is great. The skill set kind of parlays into other disease treatments. So one of them is something called diffuse esophageal spasm, where instead of just an achalasia, it's just the lower esophagus that is kind of tonically contracted or won't release, we'll say. Diffuse esophageal spasm is when kind of the entire esophagus contracts. So the idea being here, when there was nothing left to do for these patients and they were desperate for some sort of intervention, we would go and do these really long surgical extended myotomies, not just the lower esophagus, but as far up as we could get. But there's rate limiting things, anatomical barriers with surgery. But with the endoscopic procedure, there's no real um, anatomical barrier. We can make these extended myotomies. So we're using it for that and then very disease processes. I mean, you're kind of going in and you're creating this plane underneath a, a mucosal layer. So for early cancers and things like that, we're going to try and push it into that realm to save uh, patients these large oncological surgeries and try and do them much more um, minimally invasive and essentially through the mouth. It's an interesting thing because it's kind of a shock at the beginning. Um, they're very excited to eat. They're almost surprised at how much they can eat. And then we have to get in the discussion of, you know, because they've lost a lot of weight and they're going to rapidly put weight back on. That you, you don't want them to overeat or overconsume or overindulge. So, but it's a usually pretty uh, a happy event for everybody. Not too many. The biggest thing right now is follow-up. You know, these should be done in centers where you're um, expecting to follow the patient. We just want to monitor the patients, how they're doing, and how, um, how, how well the, the surgery itself is, is going to progress over time. I think it's great. I think it's great for the community. I think it's great for Tulane. I think it's great for our surgical department, our GI department. I think it's a nice um, addition to what is offered in the community already. Um, and it's a, a hopefully going to bring some patients back to New Orleans that may have uh, sought their treatment or looked for alternative sites out of the state. So. Oh, really far, I would say is, you know, far east, uh, to, um, probably Florida, Georgia, north, really the barrier might be up as high as Kansas, and west, probably, I know at least one center in Texas doing it. Right now I've had um, patients evaluated as far as Mississippi, Alabama, northern Louisiana, um, but the first patient we ever did was right here in New Orleans, it was a New Orleans local, which is, yeah, kind of the reason I came here is to help the population in this community. So. That's the thing. It is the future, so it's really exciting. This is where you're, we're going to push the envelope of surgery, um, push the envelope of endoscopy, and uh, see really what we can do. Um, so the, the, the future really is something like poem surgery that is uh, being done now widely across the world, uh, that we're getting good results from, um, and it's a really uh, one of the, the strongest and the uh, most accepted transoral surgeries that we're doing right now.